Here we go. All right, this is Kendari Blake at the LA Times Festival of Books. Kendari, when did you first discover ghost stories? Um, ghost stories way back, like elementary school in the library when they had those big collections of like the 20 scary stories about the girl who met the boy and she always wore the green ribbon around her neck. Do you remember that one? Yeah. And then he's like, oh, take off your green ribbon, take off your green ribbon. And she's like, no. And then she does and her head falls off. <laughs> So, you know, so it impacted your childhood development from a young age. Yeah. Oh, man. That's what said. I always thought, well, you know, tie it back on. <laughs> It'd be all right. And it never was. Did you gravitate then toward kind of ghost, horror, gothic type of stuff? Um, I think so. Probably my first novel that I ever read was Gerald's Game by Stephen King. And I, like, devoured all of Stephen King and then moved right into Anne Rice and Freddie Stanella. So it's pretty much all terrible. <laughs> So you were traumatizing yourself from a very young age. And that kind of, did that just naturally become the kind of story you wanted to write? No. Um, my first novel, Sleepwalk Society, was literary. It was a college story. And I, when I did my master's degree, it was all literary. I was writing all literary. I don't know what, why. <laughs> One day I just decided um, I wanted to play Silent Hill. And then I just wrote Anna instead. <laughs> So had you been reading a lot of Paranormal YA at the time before you started to write Anna, or was it just kind of, it came out of your your subconscious that way? It, yeah, it just came out that way. Honestly, when I started it, I didn't know whether it would be YA. When I wrote Sleep Lost Society, I didn't know it was YA. I just wrote what it was, and because the characters were young, that's what it ended up being. And I think that's how it was with Anna, too. In a lot of ways, Anna bucked the trend, and you had a male narrator, you had a mother who was very involved in her son's life, you had kind of making fun of some of the more brooding ideas of paranormal YA romance. And did you do that kind of on purpose, or did it just sort of happen? Um, I think most of it just happened. The story kind of takes over when I write. It doesn't really feel like I'm writing it. it, it so when Kaz's mom was involved, I didn't consciously set out to make her be involved. It's just who she was as a character. And how important do you think humor is when you're writing the type of story that Anna is? Did you consciously try to put that in and give people a break from the horror of it all? I think so. I think I think I am naturally kind of like that. I, just, I, I kind of <laughs> try and sarcastic anyway, so that's going to come out in the writing. But Kaz is especially. He does leave such a dark existence that if he doesn't yuck it up a little bit, you know. <laughs> Did you have any trouble in terms of, there's some particularly gory scenes in Anna, which are fantastic, but we all have talked about how it's kind of, gah. Did you kind of encounter any resistance to that, or did your editors just say, go for it, you know? The weirdest thing, um, the only two things that I can remember being cut from Anna, one was a ridiculous scene in which I had Anna eat a waffle. I don't know what I was doing in there, but it happened. Um, and then the other one was one sentence, and it had to do with the sound that someone's entrails made when they hit the floor. And I thought, oh, <laughs> but I guess, I mean, I understand. Did you say what that was? Can, can you remember what that sentence was? Oh, I think it was something like a meaty red slop. Nice. <laughs> And it was Mike Andover's entrails, too, like when they get torn in half, so I think they were a little bit sensitive about that. <laughs> so part of me, I can't decide if I'm glad or sad that that didn't yeah. make it in. <laughs> I love when entrails are written really well. You know, it always impresses me when I read about some entrails and I think it's almost pretty. It's, you know, there's, there's a sound and kind of texture that just blooms in your mind when yeah. discussing entrails. <laughs> Do you have experience with entrails in real life? Have you seen anything like an autopsy or anything like that? I or have not seen an autopsy like of a human, um, you know, a science class to do dissections and everything, and that's always kind of bad. Um, unfortunately, I think we all kind of have experience with roadkill. Yes. Uh. So whenever you say entrails, people know what you mean. <laughs> the universal concept. Yeah, yeah. You can't avoid it. Isn't that strange? Entrails are everywhere. So now moving forward, you've got the second book coming out in August. Can you talk a little bit about what's coming up for the series, and is this going to be a continuing series with Kaz, or? No, girl, not, a lot of people have asked that. Um, as far as I know right now, and that means as far as Kaz is telling me, girl, I know. Oh. And is Anna going to be a part of? Yes. Yes. 
uh, if you've seen the cover, Anna's on the cover, and she's kind of reaching back from from hell, it appears to be. So she's very much, as she was the driving force in the first book, she's also the driving force in the last. And should we say, for the romance fans, is there anything they can look forward to in the second book? I think so. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and what else? Do you have anything else you're working on right now? Anything else kind of in the works? Well, my next series is um, starts off with a book called Anti-Goddess, and that launches next July. And that's a trilogy. Uh, it's about Greek gods in the contemporary world. They're perpetually young. They're actually dying. Each of them dies their own separate, horrifying death. And they're trying to figure out why that is. Because, you know, for the mortal dying throughout. And there's no going back. Right, right. <laughs> so some of them want to bring the world down with it, and some of them want to save it. So very hero struggle. Do you find that um, there's a lot of Greek mythology has kind of become very popular recently? Did you feel at all? Were you worried at all about the Rick Riordan of it all, or you know these very popular books that bring Greek myth mythos into the, to our current day life? I think every time every time you write a new book, you're scared that someone else is writing the same damn book, the same damn time. <laughs> you are. But in the end, <laughs> I mean, Greeks are classic. You can write so many different books on them, and anybody who likes Greek mythology will will be. I, I read everything Greek, so not that one. I'm trying to get my husband to read Greek stuff right now. It's really slow. I bought him the whole series. <laughs> it's so you can read them in like a day. I know. Like, I can read it on lunch. What's your problem? <laughs> They're so good, though. Uh, they're, the Percy Jackson are still. Mm -hmm. Now, that movie was a travesty. Did you see that movie adaptation? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I, what I heard how terrible it was, and I, I saw, I've seen a few snippets when it plays on TV, and then I just heard that they're casting for the second one, and the casting was pretty sweet, so I don't know. Nathan Fillion is playing um, I Hermes, know. I think. I know. But the sad thing is, I almost put the first one, I was so terrible. I can't believe it made money internationally, so they're making a second one. Are you worried at all? Has Anna seen any action on the movie front? or? Um, Anna's seen a lot of interest, but no bites. Okay. So, you know, I mean, it'd be a hard thing to do, and a lot of people, uh, a lot of people compare it to Supernatural, which I, I understand the comparison, even though I swear I've never seen the show. <laughs> I can swear. Um, <laughs> I know, but my editor is such a huge fan, and I swear. I've seen one episode about dragons, it was hilarious, and I never watched another one. Uh, so, I mean, Anna's never going to be a TV show or anything like that. So. Okay. Well, yet. You never know. Yeah. Supernatural's on its last season, they ought to do something, you know. Is it really on its last season? I think season? so. But that's what they said like two years ago. Yeah, I know, but it's it's got it's. it's I think it's winding down. Maybe they'll eke out a few more, but you know. Then again, One Tree Hill was on for ten years. Probably getting pretty old. Now, aren't they? <laughs> like, it's gonna become a supernatural retirement home yeah, pretty soon like, here. That could be good. The show that wouldn't die. So what do you watch then, out of curiosity, like what TV and movies and stuff? What are your guilty pleasures? Um, I don't know if I have any guilty pleasures. Oh, I guess I watch Ringer. Oh. I watch all the season of Ringer, and now I guess they're gonna cancel it. And Empty it's not official yet, but it yeah. wasn't. It wasn't that good, but you know the Buffy loyalty. Um, Powered you through. Yeah, it really did. Fringe. I love Fringe, which also might be canceled. But have not the last few episodes been awesome? They have. Because oh, oh I really and I'm really looking forward to this week's episode with the Observers. Oh, know. and the Lincoln, the Lincoln of it all. Okay. I'm actually really sad that their ratings have been going down. Just this is getting really good. I know, and I heard that if they get canceled, they're going to do season five in Comet. Okay. Which is awesome, but not the same. I know. It, I was a big Farscape fan, and when I went to comics, it's just not the same. Well, Buffy went to comics also. And still going, right, I think? Yeah, it's still going. Although, um, slowly, as comics tend to. And then, last question. Any books you recommend to fans of Anna looking for more of the same? Any classics, maybe, or any? Uh -huh. um, I'll recommend books that I always recommend, which is anything by Caitlin R. Kiernan. She's fantastic. She writes the dark and the weird and the wonderful. Uh, the Drowning Girl. It's called The Drowning Girl, which is a challenging read, but it's so worth it. Uh, the Red Tree might be an easier place to start, which was hers in 2010, and that's fantastic, too. Um, Joe Hill. Anything by Joe Hill. He is Stephen King's son. He is Stephen King's son. <laughs> And don't tell Stephen King that. That's oh, <laughs> snap! That's dangerous words. Oh, dangerous. <laughs> I just read a um, 
an interview with Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman interviewed Stephen King, and Stephen King said that Joe Hill's style is almost indistinguishable from his own. But I think he also said he was more mad. Well, I don't know about that, but Stephen King, how many books have you written now? 80 million. Yeah. Are you excited? Fulfillion. Are you excited for the whole Dark Tower of it all? If that actually happens. You know, I never read the Dark Tower. Really? So you're like classic, classic yeah. King. I read The Gunslinger, and I just—it was a little too much for me. I don't know. I am, I am more classic King. Interesting. So do you have a favorite King movie then? A favorite King movie. Mmm, so many great adaptations and so many great terrible adaptations. I know. Probably my favorite great terrible adaptation would be the uh, movie, the TV movie for It. Oh, gosh. That was fantastic. <laughs> You're That's taking it back. With John Boy Walton and Tim Curry in clown makeup. Oh, wow. Wonderful. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, Shawshank Redemption. Genius. Yeah. Best movie ever. All right, so when does the next one is Girl of Nightmares come out? Girl of Nightmares comes out August 7th, and I'll be touring around that time, so hopefully people will come out and see me. <laughs> <laughs> well, do. All right, thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>